to have you here. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, which I hope will serve its purpose, bringing to your attention the life cycle of an orchid root and some fun facts in between. There isn't a single orchid aficionado around that does not rejoice when they see new root tips extending root growth on old roots or branching. So this video will go into the life cycle of the amazing structure that is an orchid root from beginning to end, if there is an end. There is an end to the video, I promise. <laughs> there may not always be an end to roots though, not including root tips. So with these little tidbit disclaimers out of the way, let me just preempt that. There are more disclaimers. <laughs> When I use the Ulingo like shut down, I mean that the root stays viable but stops growing. And of course, when I use the words dying, dies or dead, that is stating the obvious. Please take into consideration this video references healthy orchids with healthy and normal growth habit. In addition to that, root growth is best observed in species and possibly some primary hybrids. Once we get into complex hybrids of any sorts, when it comes to the orchid hobby, that is when all the variables kick in, which can pose a distraction from the actual behavior of orchid roots. So in this video, I am mainly referencing healthy species and primary hybrid orchids with predictable growth habits year in, year out. Those are my focus here, and the rest is then something that can be observed on an individual orchid to orchid basis without diluting the information. So I hope that makes sense. And one more thing. <laughs> this video does not address why orchid roots die because of bad media, culture, or environment. I have several videos about that subject for all kinds of media, be it organic or inorganic, some of which I will link in the description. So many disclaimers, but I think they are important when it comes to some videos. Now, let me tell you, the life cycle of an orchid root starts way before we can even see anything. The orchid starts to mobilize growth hormones to the point most favorable for a root to grow, which then poses another question. Why doesn't every leaf joint on monopodial orchids grow roots? And then another question. Why do sympodial orchids only grow roots at the base? Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> the first question is something I can answer with an air of certainty because I have been watching my Vanda totem pole for years now. I have a species on that totem pole and a complex hybrid. In my opinion, Monopodial orchids will grow roots at certain leaf joints where the connecting tissue of the leaf is a little weaker and the orchid instinctively believes that it needs to push a root from that area because that will ensure the security of the orchid as it grows in size. And when the root grabs onto something to secure its position where it is actually attached to. Another reason in my opinion is because that area is a little weaker and softer so any kind of humidity, fertilizing while misting, etc., will allow nutrients to penetrate, helping in the production of a higher concentration of the growth hormones of cytokinin, auxin, and gibberellins. The concentration of any nutrients and moisture during the process of the orchid mobilizing hormones internally, before we even see the root nubbin, is encouraged by the moisture pooling in the leaf joint, creating a more concentrated point for nutrients to accumulate. Once all the conditions are optimal, then ooh, the magic happens. <laughs> because once all the conditions are optimal, the orchid starts the root growth and on monopodial orchids, the first thing you will see is a split in the tissue. That is when we can do cartwheels around the patio. Sorry. I just love the visual though. <laughs> From the moment the tissue splits, the growth of the emerald or ruby colored root tip is visible and things progress relatively fast when considering that orchids are slow growing compared to regular houseplants. Sympodial orchids are so much more predictable because their area of root growth just so happens to be at the base of every growth. No matter if it happens when the new structure is growing, has yet to show its face, or has matured, always at the rhizome, that's where we can anticipate new root growth. And for that reason, I find that when the tissue splits on monopodial orchids, I know a root is about to grow, you know? Unexpected area, you can't predict it, it's wonderful. But fun fact, you can get an understanding as to how fast a root is growing by the length of the root tip. The longer the root tip, the faster the root is growing. Isn't that cool? 
Usually, humidity determines speed of root growth, but then again, without humidity, many epiphytic orchid roots would fail within the first few inches of growth. Eventually then, the root will start forming the velamen starting at the point of connection to the structure of the orchid and... On top of all that, several root tips on the same orchid may have different colors because one may be exposed to more light than the other and for that reason it will produce anthocyanin to protect it from being frazzled if not enough humidity is around to ensure its progress while the other may stay nice and emerald green. But next time you go and check your collection and you have orchids in active root growth, check the length of the root tips and you will be able to determine which orchids are exposed to higher humidity compared to others. Understanding whether your root is actually growing in a healthy way, and this can differ from species to species, you can notice a healthy growing root growing sleek, uninterrupted velamen. Whereas a root that is needing to grow because the orchid determines it is time and the conditions are not ideal, the velamen will have certain minute bumps, which are a result of sometimes adequate humidity for uninterrupted growth, and the unevenness that we can then see is the point of time where the root tip actually was at some point, but the humidity levels had dropped. This creates a slight unevenness of the velamen, or what I would determine bumpy velamen. It's nothing to worry about, but just an observation that could be of interest. Now, if one were to be meticulous about documenting exactly when they form, one would have to keep a daily record of humidity levels wind influence, etc. And much like the rings of a tree in a cross section, we could go back and see when moisture levels were higher as opposed to periods of drought, but of course within a shorter period of time. Ooh, I love me these kinds of details. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for geeking out with me if you're still here. Anyway, <laughs> by the time we see bumps like that, we are already well into the phase of the root extending from the orchid and heading into media, or in many cases, heading off into the direction of the highest humidity, shade, or wherever it senses that it can find something to grab onto. This phase of root growth I coined as the grab and grow phase. The roots are there to grab a hold on something. To secure the orchid strongly as it gets bigger, ensuring it won't get blown off a tree or whatever structure it is growing on. Once contact with the structure has been made, the path of the root will go wherever it finds crevices and it will change from relatively straight to all sorts of weird shapes as it follows the contours of the structure it is actually on. It will also not be round anymore, but flatten out to expand its surface area to attach more of itself to the structure. If it were to stay circular, there would be a minute point of attachment, but by flattening itself out at the point of contact increases the secure attachment by 50%. The grab and grow phase of the root cycle can go on indefinitely unless there is a substantial break. Substantial as in a complete snap, severing the velamen all the way down to the steely, or as might be the case out in nature, a branch snaps, animal intervention, something falls on the root and crushes it, and in my case, in cultivation, that would be <clears throat> accidentally crushing a root tip that was happily growing on the rim of a pot. <sighs> yes. Ooh, most annoying. But in ideal conditions, a broken root will regrow a new growing point somewhere around where there was a break. However, take note if this happens to you. If the root growing period of the orchid is already into the advanced stages and a root breaks. Then hormones are already being mobilized within the orchid for the next phase of growth and the root growth becomes secondary. At that point, the broken root will not branch but will stay viable for the most part. It will just shut down. Chances of a new growing point coming from that broken root in the next active root growing cycle are very, very high, including branching, as long as that root does not die in the meantime. Know that the growing phase of a new root and a root extending are pretty much the same. So I'm going to try and show images to see if I'm able to visually document what I'm trying to say here. What I want to focus on is the velamen on three different examples. One example being the velamen on an actively growing new root, 
what it looks like on an old established route that had shut down but reactivating the growing point and a viable route not in active growth. So let's compare. Notice how two routes differ on the same orchid. The one that is starting to shut down is thinner than the one in active growth. We can clearly see how the Velamen's characteristics are totally different. The reason being that the Velamen on a root in active growth is much more plump and supple. Supple being the key to maximum moisture absorption from the environment while it doesn't rain or we are not misting. Also, during the Teflon effect of the Velamen while it is not absorbing the moisture that we apply in form of water. This does not mean that the Velamen is not in full absorption mode at this point as the root grows. But once you see what you perceive an active growing root tip slowly being covered by Velamen, you will also notice the root taking on the appearance of all the other older roots on that orchid. The Velamen shrinks back, for lack of a better term. It becomes more dense so as to protect the spongy interior surrounding the steely from dehydrating. It still takes up moisture and nutrients from its surroundings but functions as a more dense protective coating. In case you've ever wondered why new roots are so plump and lush looking while the older roots on your orchids that are still viable are thinner, that is because the Velamen's changing characteristics. Think shrink wrap, not quite a vacuum but tight around the juicy part to keep it from drying out, much like you would put shrink wrap around your cheese or cut fruit while you have it in the fridge. Consider the velamen behaving just like our skin, which is our largest organ. It serves a multitude of purposes, as in perspiration and protection, etc. And the velamen is exactly that for the roots. And that is why transitioning media during a repot works best, even without new roots growing. Another fun fact. If older roots start to extend with root tips, the velamen behind that growing point is more supple, more receptive to a higher water retentive media, and the chances of the older part of the root failing are minimal to zero. If, of course, the surrounding conditions are optimal for the needs and preferences of the orchid. But there is another fact. It's not necessarily fun, depending what stage of health your orchid is in, but most roots will have a Teflon effect repelling water until they reach a specific length. And then, once the new root has enough velamen formed around the point of contact to the structure of the orchid, that is the area that will start absorbing moisture first. While the newest velamen closest to the growing point will not absorb water until it has reached a certain length away from the growing point and so on and so forth. But once the root is in the process of shutting down, suddenly there is a notable difference as to how the formed velamen starts to absorb moisture close to the growing point as the root stops growing. If you observe that happening, even though you still see a root tip, Know that it is a signal the root is in the process of shutting down and the orchid is on its way to initiating the next stage of growth, possibly forming a spike or sheaths or buds, maybe even going into resting mode. The Teflon effect is very, very obvious and prolonged further than on any other orchids that I have observed in my collection, and that is Brassavola roots that are far along their length and development. However, these roots will absorb moisture from the air. They restrict the mycorrhizal fungi to their roots and inside the roots, the fungi will produce pelotons. Orchids are able to digest these pelotons to obtain nutrients needed for their growth. So, while roots are in water repelling phase, they are still actively contributing to providing for the orchids needs and then, eventually will absorb water and nutrients as per our applications. Now, assuming that all conditions are ideal, and we have to assume that so as to understand the roots of our orchids, and assuming the root never suffered any stress of being severed from the growing point, there comes a time that some orchids will dump their roots. And yet others have roots that are decades old. They may be nasty and gnarly looking, covered in all sorts of living organisms, but still viable and functioning. And with that, I'm referring to Vandas and Angrecoids for the decades old functioning roots. It is also true that some roots have a life cycle. It can be biannual, as can be observed in Brassavola roots. And when I say biannual, I mean root growth one year, still maintaining the Teflon effect. Then the root starts to absorb water and nutrients the second year, 
and the root dies in the third year, so it serves a purpose for two years before it dies. But if such an orchid with root behavior like that is attached to a tree, the dead roots will serve their purpose as a form of anchoring the orchid for as long as it takes for the dead matter to deteriorate and degrade and become obsolete. Meanwhile, new roots have taken over the job of securing the orchid to the tree, wherever, and then they have taken over the task of providing for the orchid with regards to absorbing moisture, while new roots grow again with their fabulous Teflon effect. That is very specific to my understanding from what I have in my collection with Brassavola roots. On the other hand, Vanda and Angracoid roots in ideal conditions will not die off. And that is why these orchids can grow to such an incredible size out in nature because every single root that has not been severed and has not needed to branch is still functioning, providing the most amazing anchoring device and nutrient transport network. Meanwhile, these monster orchids, they need all they can get to do what they can do where they belong. <laughs> The branching phenomenon of a root system belonging to an orchid that has that ability because not all roots branch and some roots branch more readily than others. But that phenomenon is something I will talk about in another video because I want to run my observations by you. It's fascinating to me and I hope that you are also interested in figuring that one out. But know that for this video, the life cycle of a root a root with branching characteristics will only branch once it reaches a certain length. And if there is enough humidity to allow for the extra energy it takes for the orchid to branch out on the root front, and if the orchid has such character traits of having a branching root system. Because once again, not all orchids do. The Brassavolas, for example. I hope if you're not already understanding why I am so into roots because everything has to line up to then make a root grow, stay healthy and if it has the characteristics to branch more energy in order to do so. So every branch, I rejoice every time I see a root branching. <laughs> uh, sorry. Sorry, I just get distracted by the visuals of a branching root system. <laughs> but the most important thing, the takeaway apart from all the fabulous little nuggets of detail, and I hope you enjoyed the fun facts, is to know that roots are the root of orchid growing, the foundation, so to speak. They are just so fascinating to observe. And this is only the tip of the iceberg from a layman. Things that I have come to appreciate and as I missed my orchids, observe and have followed their root production habits over the years. I really hope that I did not bore you or disappoint you with the content, the information while I was geeking out on the monologue. <laughs> And I would appreciate your input in the comments. I have briefly tried to communicate my daily root fix, but this platform does have a comment section which changes the monologue to a dialogue. So I hope that you will take advantage of that and let's talk roots. And once more, I appreciate your time if you've made it to this part of the video. Thank you so very, very much for watching, for listening, for commenting, for supporting the channel and for being you. I wish you a beautiful day on one condition though that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.